Amazon just laid off 30,000 employees. There are hiring freezes in different companies that are going on. And students always come and ask me, Vivek, is it a good time to get into tech? What is happening with layoffs? How is the AI going to change the landscape? And how is the tech hiring going to change? So in this video, I'll try to give my thesis for tech hiring from whatever I've been seeing around me, from my students' experiences in different companies' interviews, from talking to so many HRs in different companies, bringing them to Algos in its placement cell. I think I have got a fair bit of idea how things are changing. Also, this will not be an average clickbait video where I'll do any baseless fear mongering. I'll also not be promoting sectors that I've seen other people doing that. Oh, do AI because AI is booming, so that will get you a job. Do Web3 because that there are jobs there. These kind of things don't work. Instead, you should try to understand the functions that are getting great demand in these days and try to build those skills. Also, in this video, I'll try to guesstimate the number of influence or the quantity of influence that will happen on the hiring pool that is happening right now. So this will be an insights based on numbers. And I'll try to add some action items from my side. If you are doing job, if you are in college, if, or if you are searching for a job, what can be your next action items? We will keep a five-year horizon for the discussion because I feel beyond that even I don't know what will happen. So if you have been thinking, should you even do SD, I'll make sure that you understand the domain very well. So without any delay, let's just get started. So first thing first, you have to understand are the different functions that exist in a tech role. Now you will come and say to me, oh Vivek, aren't these the roles that come out like full stack engineer, software engineer, all these things? No, the type of work that you are expected to do in your job. So I have ranked these orders of work in different levels. L0 being operations and support role. L1 is integration or application developer. L2 would be core infrastructure or platform development. Level 3 would be research and development. Level 4 would be architecture and systems. And level 5 would be strategy and tech leadership. So these are the five to six hierarchy that I've seen happening in different companies and we need to understand what these are in details. So when you are doing L0 work in a particular role, you must be doing something like monitoring alerts, debugging production issues, doing some log analysis, building some dashboards here and there. If you're in L1 level, which is integration on application developer, you'd be developing APIs, front end pages, dashboards, authentication flows, building product logics often. If you're doing an L2 work in a particular place, you'd be handling with CI CD pipelines, a little bit of DevOps, you'd be handling database scaling, how does caching and things work in your company, doing the cloud setup and everything. If you're doing the L3 or the research and development work in a particular place, it can be things like prototyping LLM features, building certain models that has not been deployed yet, experimenting with new architectures, trying to bring down latencies of key features, or writing technical white papers might be another thing that you might be doing in a company. If you're in architecture or system design part of job, then you're basically designing distributed systems at this point in time, doing some capacity planning, code review and all these things. And if you're in the tech leadership part, then probably you would be writing OKRs, like mentoring juniors, building roadmaps for your teams, doing a bunch of budgeting and all. These are different works that exist in a tech team. And it might not be that you are doing just exactly one of them, but it can often be a mixture of many of them. So in one of the projects that you are doing, you are just doing support handling, but in one of the other projects you are doing R&D work. These are the different level of functions that you generally work on in any tech team. Now, what you need to understand is how these work in these functions is actually changing over time. So if you see the table that is in front of you, in the L0, which which is essentially reliability and kind of QA automation role. I think out of 100 people at this point in time, just before AI coming in, or I think like the freezes happening in these times, I think out of 100 people, around 10 people used to work like six SREs or uh, four QA developers in the team out of 100 people working in a big tech company, right? And this is the proportion that I estimate. This is not really like what you would see in all the companies, but an approximate. In integration, I think around 45 engineers out of 100 work because this is the place where a lot of things needed to be built, a lot of API building, a lot of testing and everything needed to be done. And I think huge majority of hiring that used to happen was in this particular layer. Second is core infra or building the pipeline altogether. Here we used to have out of 100, 15 people being employed. For R&D, around 10 people used to out of 100 work on random experimentation, building new features that would be rolled out in the next quarter or next year. Generally out of 100 people, you can expect around 10, 9, 10 people who are in the top architecture design or lead positions in different teams who are handling the whole technical closure to the products that are being handled by that team. And of course, based on different companies, companies, there are people at the manager position as well. So this is a rough estimation of how much number of people used to be employed at different functions, right? Or how many human hours or human bandwidth used to be there in these level of functions. Now, if you see this new table, what I've tried to do is post here, how are the number of people who are employed in these roles, in these functions are kind of getting shifted now, right? Earlier where there were 10 people in L0, now you have only four people because a lot of these things are being managed by AI. From 45 to 25 is the reduction in the L1 level because I feel now 
slowly out of 100 people if you want you just need 25 people to build the apis and all because i believe if you are using ai in today's time you understand that apis and front end codes and react codes can be generated very very quickly so if one good engineer is sitting in the team they can generate this i think core infra is something that is also getting a little decrement because a lot of devops flows writing docker compose or kubernetes files are getting automated fairly often and even if people have decent understanding they can build these things using ai now you don't need to have very in depth knowledge about these things when which which used to be the case earlier one place which i generally see people getting hired more is the r&d part wherein people are getting hired in a lot of ai startups in a lot of different places to experiment on new features to build pipelines or features that used to not exist and maybe try to roll it out in the next cycle people who have high level understanding of systems are also getting hired more from 10 to 20 at l4 level because these people have done some amount of work and they have very good system understanding they have code skills that kind of lot of junior software engineers don't have and they can manage the product end to end in most cases and then i think before like this year probably we also saw jump in the manager level hiring in different tech companies right to have people who have roadmaps and visions of building new features in ai space so this is what is going on right now now let's go to 5 years assumptions because we need to think about how things are going to change in next 5 years and i expect that good ai tools are going to come like cursor or copilot x or devin like agents that used to be there uh, this is going to come and there is going to be really good amount of things automated uh, there's going to be good amount of platform maturity and there's going to be ai ready pipelines built for ci cd and stuff so i think devops is going to get take a lot of hit too in terms of employability because infra ci cd observability will be automated to a lot of degree each of the engineer will become i think 2 to 3x more productive for sure shot and often what we'll see is companies will have human redundancy to ensure that human reasoning at the level of leadership is also there in most cases so these are the new numbers that i'll see the numbers which went from 10 to 4 will actually drop to 1 at integration level from 45 which went to 25 will actually drop to just 7 8 people building the apis and the front end code at core infra level it will significantly drop because again we don't need so many people to manage the ci cd and deployment pipelines anymore just three people with ai will be able to do that rnd part i don't think it will take that much of drop uh, because we still need to experiment and build new features often uh, training new llms trying to fine tune it on new data that has been gathered by the product will keep needing people who have high level system design idea and code experience to ensure that ai code generated is actually correct and they are able to test that and i think there will be some amount of leadership removal as well because uh, it will flatten or maybe shrink because i don't think we need as many people to direct on what to be built so if you see the total retention out of 100 people my guess is approximately 54 to 55 people would be retained which means around 45 to 50% would be laid off in the next 5 years so it is going to half in the next 4 to 5 years for sure if the assumptions and the majority of systems grow the way i think about it and this is going to be just a summary of which things are going to decrease in which level so now what does this mean for you if you are in a job upskill for the functions that you just saw having good amount of hiring which means if you are in a current job try to get some work around the r&d part or designing systems part so that you can showcase these in the next time you are getting a job offer or if you are interviewing for some place because these would be highly valued skills if you are right now hunting for job please ensure that your projects showcases these skills because i can tell you even a startup would love to hire someone who has really good systems thinking and who can build stuff i often get recruiters messages that they want someone who can deliver from right from the day one and they are willing to pay like 50k for interns and 20 lpa for even freshers right so these things do keep coming up and it's just a matter of skill if you are in college right now say in first second years please understand that if your specialization in ai ml or data science or these things no longer matters all those layers has been will get democratized by the time you get out so please ensure that you build really good r&d skills you really have a good systems thinking you are able to evaluate trade offs and you are able to build stuff without that you will not get hired anywhere but if you have them you will have ample amount of opportunities that's just my thesis i'll just present it to you and let you decide things what are your thoughts on things that ai is changing let me know in the comments i just wanted to be a very high value video like this video if you like this kind of research and subscribe to the channel i'll keep making more such videos that's all from my side today thanks for joining in i'll see you in the next one bye bye